I want to provide you with a few quick tips as you begin to write your lesson plan. Um, and unfortunately, my screencasting tools aren't working this evening, so I'm just going to shoot this with my iPhone. Uh, so I apologize that the video quality isn't better than this. Uh, when you start writing your objectives, um, you want to remember uh, that learning objectives, learning objectives are typically comprised of three components, um, and uh, there's a link to this website uh, within uh, the module. Uh, but you want to make sure that you include a description of the performance, uh, the conditions, and then also the criterion or standard uh, that you're using for the objective. Uh, when many of you were uh, developing your learning contracts, uh, you struggled with this part. and so. Make sure that you revisit this resource and make sure that when you're uh, developing uh, your objectives for your uh, MTVT uh, lesson plan, uh, make sure that you write your objectives uh, and that each of your learning objectives contain each of these three elements. And then as I also indicate in the module materials, it's, a, uh, it's some of your lesson plans uh, may also include performance objectives and that's perfectly appropriate um, if you're actually using performance objectives. Um, as you're writing your objectives you want to make sure that you note the Bloom's level, uh, the, the, the Bloom's taxon um, that is being indicated by the objectives and so uh, it's fine with me if you use the uh, if you used uh, Bloom's original work or if you use the revised digital Bloom's that we call it uh, by Crothwall and Anderson uh, that I also presented. And all of this information uh, is back in Module 5. I, I encourage you to go and visit it. Um, and this is just as a refresher, this is what it looks like. Uh, there are a number of links and resources embedded in here and uh, based on some of the work I've seen since, I'm skeptical that some of you uh, have actually looked through all of these links and resources um, because I think they would have helped you uh, on some of the assignments and even on the learning contract that we've done since we've looked at that. So if you're one that, that just thought, oh, these links are here, cool, and moved on, you really would be better served if you went back and revisited these and looked at each one of them. Um, I'm going to spotlight a few of them now uh, to help you as you begin to develop your lesson plan. Uh, most of the ones that I'm going to be focusing on are down here in this section of the page. Um, I gave you a list of Bloom's action verbs. Um, and these can be really handy as you begin to write your objectives and then also as you develop your assessment that goes along with it. Um, for instance, if you're developing an objective and you realize that um, you know one of the things that the the learner will be doing is that they're going to be analyzing, you know, if your objective indicates that the learner is going to analyze information, um, then that obviously is going to likely fall under. Sometimes verbs can fall under two categories, um, but it's likely uh, that you can check here to uh, check to see if the objective fits. If the objective, as written, falls into this description here, the definition for the analysis uh, taxonomy, and if so, then you can feel pretty confident that that's going to be. Uh, form of higher order thinking because it does fall on the spectrum as higher order thinking. And so that's one way that you can use Bloom's verbs. And there are just oodles and oodles of lists of Bloom's verbs. If you Google, you can find other lists. This was just one possible list that I shared with you. Um, you can also look at this resource that I shared with you. Um, it's a list of Bloom's verbs along with definitions. Um, these definitions aren't exactly like the others, so for some of you, perhaps these definitions will 
will provide some clarity where maybe the previous uh, PDF didn't. Um, but also, on this handout, they include sample behaviors. And so as you read along, uh, so for instance, I'm going to stick with the analysis example that uh, we started with just a moment ago. As you read along and come over here, it gives you uh, some sample behaviors that would fall into that. So for instance, it mentions right here that the student will compare and contrast the cognitive and affective domains. Um, and so that might begin to help you also uh, identify the Bloom's levels that go along with objectives, but it can also be helpful as you begin to develop the assessment that goes with it. Um, because they are giving you some sample behaviors that can come along with it. Um, the next resource is similar but uh, communicates information, uh, additional information. So it's also about blooms and blooms verbs and the taxonomies. Um, all of that information is across the top and the middle row they provide uh, potential materials and solutions that can help you as you develop a lesson of that type. So for instance, un over here under analysis, you might use surveys, questionnaires, arguments, um, models, displays, and you can read all these things uh, that go along with that. And then in the third row, uh, they talk about potential activities and products that can come with it. So if your objective if when you wrote your objective, if the students were supposed to analyze something, but you don't exactly know what that outcome should look like, what, what, um, what that product might look like, or what kinds of activities they might engage in, you can look for resources such as this one that recommend potential activities and products. So this one talks about, under analysis, you could design a questionnaire, uh, write a commercial to sell a new product. Uh, you skip on down here and they talk about um, make a family tree showing relationships, prepare a report, and a variety of things. And so this resource might also be helpful to you. And then the next resource I want to show you um, it has to do with assessments and questioning strategies. And it just kind of uh, builds on everything that we've been talking about, um, but over here toward in these la uh, last two columns, uh, they give you even more information about developing assessments. Uh, let's scroll down to the analysis taxon, and so they give you additional information for assessments. Uh, talk about charts and checklists, diagrams, lists, plans, spreadsheets, etc., etc., and then in the final column here. They talk about some potential question stems. So these are ways to begin questions. So how is blank similar to blank? That's a way to uh, encourage analysis. Uh, how, why did blank occur? And, and so you can begin to use this chart to help you as you not only work with the objectives, but also develop your, your instructional strategies, the activities that go along with it, and even the assessments that go along with it. Um, and then the final thing that uh, I wanted to share was this worksheet that I, the, the Bloom's planning sheet that I uh, developed with for you. Uh, I actually developed this along with uh, some colleagues at a school, uh, Kannapolis, um, schools in Kannapolis, North Carolina. Um, they actually developed it first and then I, I've updated it and modified it. But basically um, it's a way for you to take notes and it describes uh, each level and offers some verbs that typically go along with it and help you recognize the, the appropriate taxon and then also some activities. So you can, begin, you can begin to flesh out potential learning activities and also identify digital learning tools that might go with it. So we're going to scroll down here to the analysis phase again. And it reminds us, just kind of a, a, a cheat sheet here, um, that analysis has to do with breaking information down into its component elements. 
Um, it talks about, it lists some of the common verbs, Bloom's verbs that go along with it. So comparing, organizing, deconstructing, integrating, you can see all those there. Uh, and then it also lists some potential activities, things like surveys, databases, uh, mobile and abstract reports and things like that even mind mapping and so as you as you begin to uh, work on your ideas you could you could think as far as your learning activity here in the middle column you know if you're going to anal analyze information your students might begin by comparing uh, two sets of data perhaps the data uh, is coming from the science class and um, you're doing some experiments so you could pull uh, that data from the science class and then uh, they could use some spreadsheets uh, spreadsheets and so your technology that would go along with it would be the spreadsheets but they could also use perhaps a Venn diagram to do the comparing and contrasting um, they could also use something like Kaku for concept mapping uh, to begin to do some of their analysis and, and, and those kinds of things but all along the way to help you with that then you can use these these other tools that I've shown you some of these question stems so how is blank um, compared to the other to, to blank um, um, and then looking at some other ones why did blank occur so if you're doing that science experiment why did blank occur and they could do some analysis there as they look at the data and so all of these all of these resources again coming back to module 5 uh, the blooms uh, the hots and digital blooms page uh, all these resources uh, kind of flow and build together and really in my mind um, are, should be valuable resources as you develop your MTVT lesson plan because uh, each one of them kind of walk you through that process of designing an effective lesson of integrating technology in effective ways but also using that technology to make thinking visible. And one key, one key point, because it seemed like many of you struggled with your learning contracts, if analysis, uh, typically for a lesson you're going to have three, uh, one or more, but let's just say, uh, for example, you have three objectives uh, for a lesson. Well, if objective one uses the verb uh, analyze in it then we know that the assessment that go, comes along with it should assess at the analysis level so the assessment of the first objective should be in alignment with that and if the second objective has to do with evaluation at the Bloom's evaluation level then the assessment of that should also be a very high level assessment and it should be at the evaluation level. And then objective three might be about regarding comprehension and so therefore the assessment of that objective needs to be at the comprehension level. And students can certainly you know uh, exceed that expectation but if, if, uh, if the objective is written at analysis and as, as the teacher, as the instructional designer, you do a good job with that objective and aligning the assessment to be appropriate. So it also is assessing their knowledge at the analysis level. If a student actually performs at the comprehension level, well, you can see that perhaps they do have some level of understanding, but they haven't met the objective. And so they aren't at the, at the level of understanding um, that the objective was written and so that's an opportunity for some reteaching, some reinforcement, some, some extra practice or whatever um, intervention might be needed to help them to be able to uh, increase uh, their thinking and their understanding so that it comes up at least up to the benchmark which in, this, in our example has to do with analysis. Okay. So that's, those are just some few, t those are a few tips. Uh, certainly what I've said should not be taken um, out of context because these comments were meant uh, particularly for this assignment for my students in my class um, and outside, out of context um, could certainly um, 
there there could be some misinformation in there so so don't don't read too much into what I've said um, because it doesn't necessarily translate to all lesson planning and to every situation all the best